Puget Sound in Washington State is home to a wealth of marine life, like six gilled sharks, wolf eels, and thousands of sea stars and crabs. And some believe these cold deep waters are also home to a monster, an octopus of unimaginable proportions. Within three seconds, he just came at me. I saw this octopus fly out of the den. The beak was right there. I've heard the stories about octopuses that are over 100 feet or even up to 200 feet. As long as man has been sailing the seas, there have been legends of monsters lurking below in the depths. Andros, the largest island in the Bahamas, is home to one of these legends, an octopus monster called Lushka. Andros is surrounded by blue holes, deep craters in the ocean floor. Some are nearly 500 feet deep. It is in these holes the Lushka is said to live. In the Bahamas, there has been legends of these giant octopods attacking the uh, boats of the local natives. For cryptozoologists, these are not just tall tales but sensationalized versions of a real-life monster octopus. A monster that may live here in Puget Sound, Washington, where the bottom can drop off to 700 feet or more. Like the holes in the Bahamas, only murkier, darker, easier for a beast to hide. Some say there is proof that such a monster exists, this mass on a beach in Florida. One of the great octopus stories of all time is the blob of St. Augustine, Florida. 1896, Crescent Beach, St. Augustine, Florida. Two young men discover a giant mass washed ashore. It was a big thing, it was 21 feet long, stood seven feet high. A local physician, DeWitt Webb, was one of the first on the scene to inspect the five-ton mass. He believed it to be the remains of a giant octopus. Dr. Webb had sent correspondence and photographs to Professor Varel of Yale University. In the late 19th century, A.E. Verrill was the nation's top octopus expert. Relying solely on letters and photographs, Verrill pronounced it a huge octopus and named it Octopus Giganteus Verrill. Verrill speculated that this five-ton mass was merely a portion of a larger beast weighing 20 tons and reaching a length of 75 to 100 feet from the top of the mantle to the tip of the arms with an approximate arm span of 200 feet. Then Webb said samples of the Octopus Giganteus to Verrill. But after physically examining the sample, Verrill retracted his initial identification. He said that the St. Augustine sea monster was nothing but blubber from a dead whale. In the late 19th century, they didn't do many tests. He, he mostly looked at it. But he realized there was nothing in an octopus that looked remotely like this material. And he was correct. But over a hundred years later, the scientific debate of what really washed ashore in Florida still rages on. And other similar blobs have mysteriously appeared on beaches like this one in Nantucket in 1996. And this one in Chile in 2003, fueling the giant octopus legends. Could a 200-foot monster octopus exist? And if so, what havoc could it wreak on humans and marine life? The Monster Quest investigation is focused on Puget Sound because it's home to the largest known species of octopus, called the giant Pacific octopus, which are in great abundance here. If it is hospitable for this species, it may well be a comfortable home for Octopus gigantius a completely different species yet to be confirmed by science.
The giant Pacific octopus averages five to six feet in length, with a 10 to 12 foot arm span. But the reports of octopus giganteus describe a creature with an arm span of up to 200 feet, nearly as long as this Puget Sound ferry boat. All known octopus are boneless and made mostly of muscle. An encounter with one can be a frightening experience. 1994, Seashelt Inlet, north of Vancouver in British Columbia, Canada. Doug Pemberton and cameraman Danny Morrow witnessed an unusually hostile octopus. I think we were down to about 80 feet, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw this other octopus jet out from behind these rocks and pancake itself to Doug's face. It was literally inside the den one second and on my face the next. And I see Doug struggling to get this thing off, and it was like, holy crap, he's being attacked. This is the actual video of the attack on Pemberton, captured by Morrow. I wrapped most of its arms around my head and started to uh, pull my mask off. Pemberton struggled to free himself from its grasp. The regulator was starting to come out of my mouth almost immediately. The regulator is a diver's only source of air. Without it, Pemberton could have died. The giant Pacific octopus that attacked Pemberton was an average size, about 25 pounds with an 8-foot arm span. But it was extremely powerful. It was really quite shocking. I've never seen an octopus come out and be that aggressive that quickly. In 2005, not far from Pemberton's encounter, another octopus attacked an underwater ROV, a remotely operated vehicle. The 80-pound creature first grabs a cable, then launches itself toward the ROV. The operator blasts it with the vehicle's thrusters. The octopus endures the beating, but finally gives up, freeing the ROV. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Hey, Dale. Hey, get in here, you? Sure. <laughs> a team of seasoned divers and support crew have been assembled in Washington State to try to find the giant monster which may lurk below these dark waters. Marine life researcher and diver Scott Cassell, along with commercial diver Dale Pearson, believe that such a creature is out there. I am a firm believer that the octopus gigantus for real is a true species. Local diver Jim McGaughy is familiar with Puget Sound waters. He's agreed to take Dale Pearson over the Sound to locate the best areas to conduct the dive expedition. It was in Puget Sound that McGaughy had an octopus attack of his own. So where were you when the octopus attack actually happened? I was up in the San Juan Islands, north of here. But you'll find in 2005, in northern Puget Sound, McGaughy, also an amateur underwater photographer, came face to face with a giant Pacific octopus. I was taking video about a foot away from him, and within three seconds, he just came at me, took my camera from me, and I was sitting there just surprised. This one must have been 50 pounds, maybe a little more. It was definitely the largest that I've ever seen. So there's some really good habitat around here for some giant octopus. Down around the Tacoma area, Tacoma Narrows, off the south end of Vashon Island, you'll find giant octopus. McGaughy believes the deeper the water, the better the chances of seeing something really big. Well, right here, this channel drops off really fast. Giant octopus are all over out here. The diver's investigation will utilize several underwater camera systems to try to capture the beast on film, either roaming the sea in search of its next meal or lurking in its den. The hope, obviously, is that we can catch one on film while we're down in the water. The divers will film with their own high-definition underwater video camera system. They'll also deploy an underwater surveillance camera called Aquapix, used both in industry and for marine research. The Aquapix system that does 360-degree rotation snaps a picture every 10 seconds. I, as a researcher, I want to see evidence that they are there, not that they're not. 
Here in Puget Sound, we have areas that are over 700 feet deep, so that's a perfect migratory area for deepwater species to come up shallow and feed. With an abundant food supply and plenty of octopuses for octopus gigantius to feed on, Puget Sound is the perfect place for such a beast to live. And the Monster Quest team is out to find it. That was awesome! That was awesome! I mean, it was like fighting another person. Day one. The Monster Quest expedition to find the legendary beast called Octopus Gigantius is underway. Divers Dale Pearson and Scott Cassell board the sampan captained by Rick Myers. The site of the first dive will be near Vashon Island in Puget Sound, just north of Tacoma. Puget Sound can be a dangerous place to dive. The area is home to various sharks and eels. The current this season is the roughest it's been all year. And the water temperature is close to freezing. I hope I don't drift too far from shore. <laughs> Their main goal in this first dive is to search for signs of octopus that could be food for the monster. Their theory, find the food supply and you might find the creature coming up from below to feed. Cassell and Pearson use a wireless intercom system to maintain communication with the topside crew. The underwater current is tremendous. Pearson has to brace himself to keep from being swept away. If one of our divers got lost, the current would take him straight out to the west of us. And I have, I have picked divers up a couple miles away. Myers and the sampan will track the divers by looking for their bubbles on the water's surface and follow them if necessary. Puget Sound is deep. Carved by glaciers, it has sharp drops in places. Much of the sound is six to eight hundred feet deep. Ample depth for a creature with an arm span that could stretch two hundred feet. I don't believe that octopuses that big exist. Roland Anderson of the Seattle Aquarium is one of the nation's leading octopus experts. He's skeptical of the octopus gigantius reports. You want a crab? And I don't believe that there's a whole different species other than giant Pacific octopus. I think the giant Pacific octopus is the largest species in the world. But if a giant does exist, it is likely to be an intelligent and formidable enemy. Octopuses have been able to figure out how to open jars to get it food. They can easily hide from view as they can squeeze their entire body through the smallest of openings because they have no bones. And they are the masters of disguise, able to not only change their color, but also the texture of their skin to avoid predators. Octopus have been known to eat each other and even attack animals.